I'm finally going to be showing off the Unleashed Project. I did the best that I could recording this. The footage is a little bit choppy. I have a really powerful PC, so it never has any frame rate problems or anything like that when I'm actually playing it. Even Adabat is very smooth when I'm actually playing it. It's just that when I'm recording, I guess it has more strain on my computer. So, if the frame rate isn't that perfect, well, I did the best that I could. This is actually... This is actually a great way to... I, I really do think that the Unleashed Project improved on Unleashed's levels. To make them less cheap. Because I was expecting this to be really cheap, because I heard the HD version was a lot harder. But to be honest, it didn't really seem that... It didn't seem... Aside from a few levels that were really cheap, it didn't seem all that... Frustrates me. You'll notice that most of the time when I'm boosting forwards, I tend to veer to the left and right like like Sonic is drunken. And well, that's because I'm using the Xbox 360's analog stick. And like my Windows controller, well its analog stick is not exactly as great as the GameCube controller's one. It doesn't, it doesn't really allow for precise movement. So, that's... I, I really do like that level. Like, it's really short, but it's so easy to get multiple lives just from playing it. So, at one point, I actually grinded up to 99 lives just playing it. Well, not 99 lives. I grinded up to a large amount of lives and used the skill points that I earned from beating it to buy a whole bunch of lives afterwards. I think the main difference between the Wii and HD levels is that the Wii levels have a lot more drifting in it. Well here well here you're just boosting in a straight line. Which I actually kind of prefer and kind of don't at the same time. But yeah, like all of the, most of these levels are really fun. There were there were some problems I had with adjusting to well just playing the boost gameplay with the Xbox controller, I, I slid to the stop there because I was holding up. Maybe I was holding the wrong direction. I don't know. 2D sections are still awkward. You're still always moving slow and it's not intuitive which direction you're supposed to hold. Oh yeah, another major difference. There's a lot more rail switching in the HD levels. Which I like. In Generations, which is what the Unleashed Project is based off of, it did a lot to improve the controls in the gameplay. All you have to do is tap left and right, and you'll switch rails. Which is why it's so confusing that it says L on the rails when expecting to rail switch. But pressing L does nothing. So that's kind of confusing. Like, you can have L show up, and you press it, and then you die. But yeah, like, it was kind of awkward adjusting to playing with a non-GameCube controller for the boost gameplay. I think, even though a lot of people think that the GameCube controller is kind of weird for boost gameplay because they're not used to it, I honestly think that the way that the buttons are arranged makes it the best for it. Because, with the way the Xbox controller is, every button, the A, B, Y, and X button, are the, sta are the same size and shape, as if they're all of equal importance when they aren't. And so, when you're playing the game, when you're playing this game, you basically generally got your finger hovering over the A and, and X buttons. Because the X button is the boost button, and the A button is the jump, obviously. But that creates a lot of problems when you're suddenly expected to slide, which you use the B button for. And so, your reaction times are a lot... Like, like with Unleashed, you would slide and drift with the same button. And this never had any problem at all. I never had any problem where I drifted instead of slide, or would slide instead of drift. This is also a pretty fun level. It's definitely a lot more fun than Unleashed version of it, because you start out with boost right from the get-go. Rather than having to spend an entire minute getting boost and being bored the whole time. And this is one of the levels that we were cheated out of. 
Missouri. Missouri didn't have any levels in the Wii version. A lot of people say that the music for this level was based on the version was based on the credits of Sonic 1 8 bit. I'm pretty sure it was just a coincidence. I'm pretty sure that the composer of the song didn't play the the Sonic 1 8 bit or even hear the music to begin with. And there's only so many good melodies that can possibly be done, so I'm sure it was just a coincidence. I don't even think Sega remembers the Game Gear games. They barely reference them generations at all. So I doubt they would have intentionally told them to make level music like that. But anyways, this level is pretty fun too. I don't really find it to be cheap at all. But yeah, with the way that the Xbox 360 controller's button, ra button arrangement is, I feel like I have a slower amount of time reacting to when I'm suddenly expected to slide. Generations, and I believe Unleashed HD as well, you drift by using the the shoulder buttons that are the furthest away from you. Like the LT and RT buttons. And you quick step by using completely different shoulder buttons. The, the LB and RB ones. So it's kind of difficult suddenly adjusting from drifting to using a completely different pair of shoulder buttons to quick step and vice versa kind of hard to react to doing that right away. There aren't really any red medals in... You collect medals in, in HD Unleashed. But this level, the Unleashed Project will give you red rings from Generations to collect instead. I feel like the drift definitely isn't perfect. I kind of feel like it can be kind of clunky, I guess. It's good, though. It works. I feel like boosting in Unleashed kind of feels more satisfying. Because, again, Sonic is going, Hah! and stuff like that. And it feels more satisfying. But the boost definitely looks better. And obviously, there's the fact that the boost mechanic works a million times better in HD Unleashed and in Generations. In Generations and in HD Unleashed, you start out with boost right from the start. And you use rings to fill up your boost meter. There are plenty there are plenty of times in the Unleashed project in the footage I'm showing you that I ended up not having boost for a while. But it wasn't like in Unleashed where the boost was timed button presses. And you weren't allowed to boost when you were quick stepping or drifting. Which was really weird because I felt like boosting so naturally combined with quick stepping. In this game, you can boost the quick step at the same time, which is good. So this level has a lot of platforming in it. The platforming is pretty good. In general, this level is pretty fun and easy. I noticed that it was over in just three minutes. Which is the perfect Time for a Sonic level. Okay, I had a lot of difficulty recording this one. So, there is some lost footage for this because I thought that I had it recorded, but I didn't. I don't know what it is about Rooftop Run in Unleashed Project that makes it so easy for it to crash. No joke, when I first beat this, the game crashed on me after I went past the victory screen, and it never saved, so I had to beat it all over again. So, that's an establishing character moment right there. The very first time I beat this in the Unleashed Project, it crashed. So I guess I should have taken that as a warning sign that trying to record it wouldn't really work out. I was able to record all of it, or, well, most of it. I at least got to the goal ring and showed me getting to it. But the point is, I'm guessing that this level just hates being recorded? Like, it's weird, I don't really understand. This level is exactly high performance. I- you can actually fall to your death if you don't drift in that previous area. 
And that was what taught me that, okay, I need to learn how to actually drift. Because wh when I first got into the Alicia Project, I didn't know how to drift. And I was really confused because I was pressing the quick step buttons and I wasn't drifting. So yeah, like it was kind of hard to get used to. I guess I kind of prefer the way that the GameCube controller does the boost gameplay now. Oh god, that, that that light speed attack! That light speed dash! I hate it so much in Generations! Generations easily has my least favorite version of light speed dash in Sonic history. It is so unresponsive! So many times, I'll be right next to a trail of rings that are specifically marked to allow me to light speed dash on them, and it won't work! I'll be furiously mashing the Y button multiple times just to try to get the game to respond the way I want. And nothing will happen! It's like you have to be ridiculously close to them. So it's a good thing that there's barely any times when you're absolutely forced to use the light speed dash to beat the level. Rooftop run. You're running along rooftops. Which is something that you didn't really do in the Wii version. Like, the Wii version... I didn't really like this level in the Wii version. It can be fun when you know what to do, but you're always along the ground. And so, there's, you're constantly running up to multicolored walls that take longer for you to register them as walls that you have to quick step away from, and drift away from. Here, it's handled a lot better because there's a lot of times when you're, you know, you're on the roof, or on grind rails high above the sky. And, there's the fact that the walls that you're boosting towards are covered in shadows. So, you don't instantly have all of the different colors pop out at you because they're all bright. One of the best things that Unleashed did is that it introduced a new method of loading levels where it would load them as you progress with them. This meant that you didn't have gigantic load times at the beginning of every level like in 06, but it also meant that speedrunners can level the entire level invisible by progressing to areas faster than they should, which is pretty crazy. Generations has it too. There are multiple different areas where the game would freeze on me when I was trying to record it. And every time the game froze on me, it crashed my entire computer. So, it's not like I like left behind corrupted footage. Even when I was recording the game in windowed mode, with the screen capture tool rather than recording the game itself, it still left behind corrupted footage when the game froze on me. So I couldn't show you the game crashing here even if I wanted to. You just kind of have to take my word for it. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to dodge any of these lasers. But you don't exactly die from getting hit by them. Which is good. These are always a fun challenge. Like, they really reward your quick-stepping skills. But to be honest, I'm, I'm sick to death of them by this point because I've dealt with them so many times. Like, I think I would prefer them if they were just a one-level thing. I don't, I don't feel like quick stepping is nearly as satisfying feeling as it is in the Wii version, where you just instantly switch from one area to the next. I feel like quick stepping is kind of slower in generations, and probably the HD Unleashed too. One of the things that generations improved on control-wise was that. With wall jumping, you can just keep on holding one direction and you'll, you'll keep wall jumping and not screw it up. Like, you're, you could be holding right and you can just keep on pressing the A button. These knee-high walls! The level doesn't have nearly as many of them as the Wii version does. But chun -An still has the problem of long stretches of land we're expected to constantly jump. Like, as if that's supposed to be intuitive to you at all. Like, it's a long stretch of land, your Sonic Instincts are not telling you that you should be constantly jumping. I mean, I like this. This is a really good set piece that makes your level memorable. That's why I like the aesthetic of chun -An, even though it's mostly all gray and bricks. Because you have that, that contrast with the red dragon stuff. Something I forgot to mention is that in Sonic and Knuckles, you can't jump into the monitors from below and get crushed. While in other classic Sonic games, you can. That's a weird physics difference. Here's where you can easily die because 
You just came out of a 2D section, and now you're expected to... Like, Sonic just drunkenly veers to the right, because you're holding right because you're in the 2D section. You should only transition to 3D from 2D using grind rails. Because there, it's completely automatic. Something that the HD version of Elation is very well known for is something called the Wentos trick. Basically, there's this NPC in the Empire City hub world called Wentos. He's pretty memorable because he talks to his puppet, who is basically a chow. But anyways, the Wentos trick is, the Wentos trick is basically, he sells you food that you could use as experience points. And you buy his discounted food and sell it to other shops at a higher price than you spent to get it. So by doing that, you can end up with a huge amount of food that can give Sonic a huge amount of experience points. This area sucks. And the reason for that is that it, it's so terrible at telling you where exactly you're supposed to go. The problem is that, like, obviously you're supposed to go to the dash pads. Even though that last dash pad was completely blocked off by the crates. So how could you see them from distance to begin with? The dash pads don't exactly immediately pop out at you from a distance. Like, they're too dark colored. So, I don't really feel like it's good design to expect me to instantly decide, like, yeah, I've, I've gotta look for the dash pads in the distance. Except for the fact that, you know, they don't exactly pop out at you. Like, the area has no sense of direction at all. So it's very easy to get lost in that water area and end up falling to your death because you ran into walls or stumbled in circles. But yeah, the Wentos trick is actually a pretty cool way of getting yourself max experience pretty easily. There's also a trick where you can basically destroy an enemy in the Chun Nan hub world just outside of its entrance, and you can cause it to infinitely spawn XP crystals. This part, right here, this is really awkward because it's one thing and one thing only, the camera. Why is the camera so high up? It makes it so difficult to tell what level you're at, elevation-wise. I remember getting stuck here for such a long time when I first played it, and not really being able to figure out how I was supposed to beat it. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what platforms you should land on, of what elevations. And it's also the fact that it, it kind of looks like... See, that to the right of me, that spiked pillar thing, it looks like I should be able to just be able to go under it, because it looks like it's above me. So I walked into it. It's kind of hard to tell that you can jump over here, because you might not figure out that you can. And I hate that firework. Mainly because I hate fireworks in real life. Cause like obviously, like they're they create loud explosions. So naturally you're not really going to I don't really like them all that much. But they are a good aesthetic thing for making the level feel more memorable. Like the Wii version did not have these spinning platforms at all. And like there is definitely slow platforming here. Like I don't know why people say that this only should just boost to win when there's clearly platforming there. It's just that the whole spinning thing kind of breaks the pace because you're not. There's no fast moving at all. Although I guess with speed like this, it's kind of impossible to have both speed and platforming at the same time. Like, unless you count rail switching as platforming. Which you're not jumping. Well, I guess you kind of are. But yeah, you can buy food to get experience points in Unleashed HD, and you can actually feed them to Chip, but don't do that because he'll just steal the experience points on you. And if you feed him too much, until the game was patched, that could actually crash the game. I believe you get an achievement by doing that, not by crashing the game, by feeding Chip enough. So it's, it was pretty excusable that that glitch actually existed. Anyways, next part, I'll show off the rest of the Unleash project.